They say with gambling, the house always wins. But if you're in the know, person to person bets can be a whole different ball game. If you're in need of an extra buck or a free drink at the local watering hole, then stay tuned and I'll show you some amazing bets you'll always win. Let's start off with something that's guaranteed to stump the sober and dazzle the drunk out of their hard-earned cash. For this, you'll need two toothpicks, a salt or pepper shaker, and two forks. Simply insert one toothpick into the shaker and bet someone you can balance the point of another toothpick on top of it. When everybody doubts you, simply intertwine two forks around the second toothpick. Through the wonders of physics and a little tweaking, the counterweight of both forks will allow you to balance the two toothpicks together perfectly. It's a little tricky, but with a little practice, you'll become a master toothpick con artist. Next up, here's a bet that'll line your pockets while also helping to break the ice with that one cutie you don't have the courage to speak to. To begin with, bet your friends that you can get a complete stranger to say 50 words in a row that don't contain the letter A. You can even up the ante by adding a time limit. An extra dollar if you can do it in 60 seconds, two dollars for 30 seconds, and so on. Once they've taken the bait, choose someone in the bar, i.e. that cutie I mentioned, and ask them if they'll help you out. Once they agree to participate, ask them to quickly count to 50. And that's it. Not a single one of all the numbers between 0 and 50 has the letter A in it. So congrats, the bet's been won and you can smugly enjoy your cash, beer, and newfound company while your old friends cool off from their losses. For this next bet, all you'll need is an empty matchbox, an empty drinking glass, and a slightly loose moral compass. All of these things, of course, are pretty easy to come by in your average bar. Turn the glass over and bet your friends you can flip the matchbox upright in a single flick and that they won't be able to. You may be thinking, how can you be so sure they'll get stumped by this? Well, make sure that when they try to flip the matchbox, the open side of the internal drawer is facing down. When it's your turn to flip the matchbox, make sure the open side of the drawer is facing upwards. It may seem like a negligible difference, but the difference in weight between the open side and closed side of the drawer changes the way it flips. With the open side of the drawer facing upwards, slightly more weight is in the edge of the matchbox that's touching the glass. This stops it from slipping backwards by allowing you to create a pivot point. With the matchbox the other way around, there's nothing to weigh it down in place and the momentum in the opposite end will push it straight off the glass. It'll slip backwards almost every time, making it near impossible to flip or even push into an upright position without it falling off the glass. Your friends will go crazy trying to figure out how you became the grandmaster of matchbox flipping. Like other bets of this kind, you'll owe your victory beer and or bucks to simple physics. This next bet is deceptively simple, and all you'll need is a marker pen, a piece of paper, an empty glass, and a glass of water. First, draw an arrow on the piece of paper and prop it against the empty glass. Then, place a bet that you can reverse the arrow's direction without touching the piece of paper. Once you've sufficiently razzed the doubters, simply slide the glass of water, or whatever translucent liquid you have on hand, in front of the arrow. The liquid's refraction will cause it to appear reversed. For a big finish, direct all the losers to follow the arrow with their money directly into your pocket. Next up, we have a seriously impressive bet that takes a little bit of setting up. You'll need a glass with a little bit of water in it, a napkin, a few matches, a small table, and some blue tag. Bet your friends that you can lift the table using only these items without putting any of them under the table. They'll probably laugh to themselves as they imagine you trying and failing to use Blue Tack's mediocre grip to lift a table. But of course, that's not how you'll actually do it. Here's how you turn their laughter into awe. Roll the Blue Tack into a ball and stick one of the matches upright in it. Then, pour the water on the table, place the napkin in the puddle to soak some of the water up, then place the Blue Tack match combo upright on the napkin. Light the match and quickly cover it up with the now empty glass. After a few seconds, the match will burn up the oxygen inside the glass and be extinguished. Coupled with the damp napkin it's in contact with, this will create a surprisingly strong vacuum seal, allowing you to lift the whole table while touching only the glass. Hogwarts, here you come. For this next bet, you'll need two matchboxes. Unfold one of them, forming an archway large enough to easily pass the other one through. 
Then, bet your targets that you'll be able to make the still-assembled matchbox pass under the archway from the opposite side without you touching it. They'll most likely think it's impossible, unless you have some hidden telekinetic abilities or a teeny tiny lasso, but it's actually very simple. Move yourself into a position so that the archway is between the matchbox and yourself. Place your hand open, slightly cupped, behind the matchbox and blow. The air will be directed off of your hand, pushing the box through the archway. This one proves that, to be a master at these bets, you've just got to think outside the box. Now for some simple yet impressive sleight of hand. All you need for this trick is a single rubber band. Loop the rubber band over your index finger, then pull the band around your middle finger before locking it over your index finger again. Then ask your bet buddy to hold the tip of your index finger. Bet them that you can free your index finger from the rubber band without them letting go. They'll expect to see you wriggling and shaking to free yourself, but you'll be ready to wow them with a calm escape that'll prove you're the rubber band Houdini. If you wrap the band correctly, you'll be able to free your index finger simply by folding your middle finger. Either one end or both of the rubber band will pop off, releasing it from your index finger seamlessly. Your friends will ask you to do this again and again until they can figure it out, so keep those fingers in good shape. This next type of bar bet is one of my favorites. It's the kind where you trick the oblivious mark into winning the bet for you. For this trick, you'll need two quarters, or any type of coin, and a napkin. Place one quarter on the table and place the napkin over top of it. Bet your friends you can move the quarter without touching or blowing on the napkin. While you're explaining the bet's terms, secretly take another quarter out of your pocket and hide it in your hand. Meanwhile, you can throw in a few magical incantations and wave your free hand over the napkin for some extra misdirectional effects if you like. Once they've accepted the terms of the bet, show them the quarter you're holding and tell them it's the one from under the napkin. They'll likely say something along the lines of, do you think I'm stupid or something? And yes, you might actually think that, but not for the reasons they're thinking. When they remove the napkin to prove that the quarter in your hands isn't the original quarter, simply pick the original coin up. And there you have it, you move the quarter without touching the napkin. A guaranteed win with only a 50 cent deposit. This next bet requires a pair of scissors, a playing card, and a little dexterity. For that dexterity, it may be best to try this one a little earlier in the night. To begin, bet your friends you can cut a hole in a card that you'll be able to fit your head through. Unless you've somehow acquired novelty A4 cards, your friends will think you're crazy. But here's how you can prove them wrong. Fold the card in half like so. Then, on the folded side, make around seven evenly spaced cuts, stopping a little short from the edge. Then unfold the card and make cuts along both sides and between the previous cuts, but making sure to leave some space between the cuts in the central fold. Now you should be able to push the scissors underneath the cut at the card's top and cut along the fold to the last cut on the other side. Be careful here as one wrong cut can mess the whole trick up. Finally, you can carefully expand the card, revealing a paper ring big enough to fit your head through. Well, unless you're Stewie Griffin. But maybe you shouldn't be making bar bets anyway. Up next, we have a bet that finally puts all that annoying change in your pocket to good use. For this, you'll need a handful of copper and silver coins arranged into four rows. Each row's coins will alternate between copper and silver like so. Place a bet that your opponent can't create all silver and all copper rows like this by only touching two coins. They'll try and try, but will almost certainly have zero luck. To win this bet, simply move the top second and fourth coins to the bottom of their corresponding rows and push up. You'll win the bet and wow the surrounding inebriated crowd with the accompanying visuals. Now for the perfect trick when you're down to your last couple of coins. You could use that dime towards a bus home, or you could win yourself another round. Besides a dime or other small coin, you'll need some paper, scissors, a larger coin like a nickel, and a pen. Trace the smaller coin on the paper and cut a hole using the outline. Then bet people that you can pass the larger coin through the hole without tearing the paper. Once the onlookers are sufficiently stumped, fold the piece of paper over the larger coin. Then simply bend the paper, maneuvering it around until the larger coin slides through the hole as it widens. Now the hole in the paper will magically become a hole in your buddy's pockets. For the final trick, I present to you a bonus two for one deal. This one involves making the outrageous claims that you can cut a watermelon with either a piece of paper or a quarter. Both tricks are possible with some clever usage of physics. 
You'll just need to learn to live with being that person who brings watermelons to the bar. For the paper option, you'll need to fold a paper sheet over on itself in a triangle shape as many times as you can until it becomes very firm. With this slapdash paper shiv, you should be able to pierce the rind of the melon with a firm stab. Repeat the stab as many times as needed around the watermelon's perimeter until the stab line connects back with itself. These holes will remove most of the watermelon's structural integrity and a firm karate chop should open that baby right up. Or if that's too much effort, you could just bet that you can cut off a chunk of watermelon using nothing but paper rather than cutting it in half. It'll be ready to eat in mere, well, minutes. The coin method, on the other hand, is a lot easier. Begin by wedging the quarter into the surface of the rind using the semi-serrated edge. Then, press it against a hard surface like a table and whack the top of the watermelon. This will sink the coin into the rind much easier than forcing it by hand. Repeat this process, working the coin all the way around the perimeter. Once you're back where you started, you'll be able to either pry or judo chop the watermelon in half. For onlookers, the ingenious, fruity expertise you demonstrate will be worth losing a few bucks. Just make sure you practice a little at home first. So will you be trying out any of these guaranteed win bets for yourself? Do you have any go-to bets of your own? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.